sounded really weird. It's called Five Worlds. I just hit myself in the face with that book. Wow. <laughs> Jay and today I'm here with my part two wrap up for April 2019. I read a total of 12 books this month. So the first six that I read are in part one. This is the final six that I read. So without further ado, let us get started. So the first book that I read was Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nagan and I ended up giving this a five out of five stars. I loved it. So this follows Leigh who was born into the paper caste which is the lowest ranking social status in the land of Ikara. Each year the demon king picks eight girls from the paper caste to be his concubines and some of them go willingly some of them do not. So one day the king's guards show up in Lei's village and they say that she needs to come with them in order to be one of these concubines because she is a rare prize for the king because she has golden demon eyes but she's a paper cast. When she was younger Lei's mother was taken from her and this still haunts her to this day so she decides that she will enter palace in order to try to figure out what happened to her mother. She never expected to fall in love and it's basically that story. But like I said, five out of five stars. I liked this way, way more than I thought I would. I thought I would enjoy it, but this exceeded my expectations, let me tell you. The fact that this is a debut novel honestly blows my mind because it does not feel like one at all. The writing is just so beautiful and vivid and I loved the system in this book of the castings. I thought they were really cool and I loved learning more about them. Right from the very beginning of this book, I was instantly drawn in and hooked not only on the plot but also on the characters. I just loved every single one of them. There was just so much tension, not only on like the political aspect of the storyline, but also between characters and not just like two characters. It was like every single character had something going on at once. I also really loved how the author tackled very difficult topics, mostly around rape and rape culture. I loved the underlying message of you're able to take your body back from your attacker and express your sexuality in your own way. I also really loved how weak Lei was at the beginning of the story but as it progressed you saw her grow stronger and stronger and I just loved seeing that in her. I also am a huge fan of like every single side character in this book. I really enjoyed every single paper cast girl except for you know Blue but you're not supposed to like her so. I also want to say that the Demon King is the most despicable human, not really a human, but still on the face of this earth and I hate him so so much which again is the point of his character but he can choke and die. I really loved the romance is a slow burn which is one of my favorite tropes so I was here for it and the ending of this book really infuriated me but I cannot wait for the sequel now. I need it in my hands like ASAP so if you guys haven't checked out this book. I definitely, definitely recommend it. The next book that I read is called All We Could Have Been by T. Carter and I ended up giving this a three out of five stars. The book follows Lexi whose brother committed a very violent crime five years ago. So for the past five years, she's been moving from relative to relative once people discover what this act is and connect the two together. So now it is her senior year of high school and she's very determined to stay in one place. So she ends up moving in with her aunt and then this is the story that takes place. Originally, I thought that this was going to be like a four star book. I really loved it when I started out, but it just went downhill for me. It got incredibly boring after a while and it just felt very repetitive. I was really rooting for Lexi and I wanted her to get past having to deal with what her brother did because obviously she's not her brother and it's not her fault. But then the love cures all trope reared its ugly head and I just could not with the story anymore. It was also like really cringy insta-love which I'm not here for. We all know this by now so that definitely took away from the story for me. It was literally Lexi and her love interest saw each other twice for like 20 minutes each and then they were in love and it was just like a lot and then also I didn't like Ryan who is supposed to be like her best friend in the book and the way he treated her was like super hypocritical and I was just not about it. So unfortunately I didn't like this book but I don't necessarily think that it's a bad book. It's just like average in my opinion. So 
If it sounds like something you'd be interested in, check it out, but was not for me. The next book I read is Internment by Samira Ahmed. I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The book follows Layla and her family who are forced into an internment camp for Muslim Americans by the United States. Once there, she joins up with a few others in the camp, her boyfriend on the outside, and a couple of unlikely allies to fight and rebel against the government. I think that this book deals with very important topics, but the main character, Layla, really got on my nerves at times when it came to her boyfriend. She honestly didn't give a fuck about anything but spending time with David, which didn't make sense in her situation because she was putting not only herself at risk, but also her entire family at risk for like a couple kisses from this boy. Like, he ain't worth it. I'm sorry, he's not. I also really didn't like like the villain of this book who is like the leader of this internment camp he came off almost cartoonish to me like he was just too much of a villain if that makes sense that it just didn't seem realistic for this setting of the book it just didn't work. I did really enjoy the friends that Layla made in the camp and how loyal everybody was to each other that was a really great thing to see I didn't like the ending. I'm still bitter about what happened. Obviously, I can't tell you. If you've read the book, you can probably guess, but it did feel like nothing really happened for the first 300 pages, and then everything was just crammed into the last 100 pages, and it was just like the whole pacing of the book was a little off for me. So overall, I do think that it is an important book to read and it covers a very important topic, but I think that it probably could have been executed better. The next book that I have is a graphic novel and it's Five Worlds, The Red Maze by Mark Siegel and Alexis Siegel. I gave this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. This is the third book in a series where it follows these three little kiddos and they're trying to light a beacon to save the world basically but there's five different worlds so they have to travel to each world this is the third world i just felt that this installment of the series was a bit slow and boring for my taste i do really like the art style that they have in this book it's like super colorful and fun but i just didn't like the story this time around i did like the introduction of the new character zell and i wish there was more on her rather than following these three but that's just me. It's a middle grade book, so if you're into like middle grade graphic novels, this might be for you, but just too slow for my liking. The next book that I have is called Three Dark Crowns, and this is by Kendar Blake, and I ended up giving this a four out of five stars. Every generation on the island of Fenburn triplet queens are born who possess special abilities. Mirabella is an elemental, Catherine is a poisoner, and Arsinoe is a naturalist. Mirabella has mastered her powers, but the other two sisters have been struggling with their abilities. In order to become queen, one of the sisters must kill the other two, and this is their story. I liked this a lot more than I thought I would. It started off very slow, and I was like not into it, and I was really worried that I would want to DNF it, but it eventually did pick up, and I became very invested in these three sisters. I loved learning about each of the queens and their powers and it did take a long time to set up the world. You do have to consider that the author had to set up three different regions of the world who all had their own political systems and different things that went on in that one region so it did make sense why it took so long but once you get the world building done like damn this book is good personally i'm a big fan of books with multiple point of views so i really liked hearing from the three queens catherine definitely had the most pressure on her based off of everybody thinking that she should be the winner since so many poisoners before her have won the competition or battle or whatever you want to call it but honestly i just kind of felt bad for her the entire time because she is so weak i just felt like she was being completely manipulated by peter the entire time who's the love interest and i just did not like him at all i really liked arsenal i think that she was probably my favorite of the three sisters and i want to see her in the next book to see what the heck is going on with her i also really loved her friendship with jules i think that it was a very strong female friendship and i love seeing that in this book i did like mirabella i think that she was a very strong character I liked how loyal she was to her sisters, even though she's been raised to want to fight them and kill them. She was very like, nah, they family. The only like major complaint I do have about this book is the amount of insta-love. Not a big fan and there was a hell of a lot of it in this book. So if 
I could change anything of the book, that would be it. I'm very, very excited to find a copy of the sequel because that cliffhanger though, like, what was that? I definitely have a lot of theories about where I think the story is going, so I'm definitely intrigued to see if I'm correct. Probably won't be, but that's okay. And then finally, the last book that I read this month was Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa, and I am so disappointed in this book. I ended up giving it a 2 out of 5 stars. So in the land of Iwagato, there is a scroll of a thousand prayers, which is used to summon a dragon, which will grant a single wish to the summoner. If the summoner has a pure heart, their wish is granted, no problem, but if they do not, all health breaks loose. So many years ago, the dragon was summoned and things did not go as planned, and so the scroll was taken and broken into pieces and scattered across the land and is now under supervision. Yumiko is a half kitsune fox who has been raised by monks her entire life. One day her home is burnt to the ground by a demon who is looking for the scroll. Keiji Tatsumi is a samurai of the Shadow Clan and he is also looking for the scroll because his master wants it in order to summon the dragon. Tatsume runs into Yumiko who promises to lead him to the scroll in exchange for safe travels to this temple. So like I said, this book was just super boring in my opinion. I wasn't invested in any of the characters anything that happened until the last 30 to 40 pages which like this book is almost 500 pages or something like that so like is that not a good sign? I honestly only cared about Yumiko and Okami who is like a warrior samurai who was like shunned so he's not really a samurai but he was just like the comedic relief of the book. The biggest complaint I think I have for this book is that it was told in multiple perspectives but you were never told who was talking so you'd have to read a lot of it in order to figure out who you were actually reading from. I listened to it on audiobook so I had the benefit of having different voice actors but I know that a lot of people complained that they had no idea who they were reading from which I can totally see if you didn't have the audio version of it. But yeah, like I said, just super boring wasn't for me, but I know that a lot of people did love this book, so definitely check it out if it sounds interesting to you, but not a fan. All right, guys, so that was my part two wrap up for April 2019. Check out part one if you're interested in the first six books that I read. Let me know down below if you've read any of these and what you thought of them, and I'll see you all in my next video. Goodbye!